The original Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton is an intellectually provocative read. For those that have chosen to only pay attention to the movie adaptations of the Doctor's work, I can't recommend their source material highly enough. To fully appreciate and understand all of what's happening within the films, I do truly think that the books are an absolute necessity, especially for the fans that wish to expand their understanding of the themes. Ethical morals, scientific theory, paleontology, biological possibilities, social behavior research, and an examination on human hubris and ambition are all present within the relatively short 400 pages of both of the author's Jurassic works. Towards the beginning of his first book, Ian Malcolm, the now famous chaotician, gives us a short demonstration of just how unpredictable these complex systems can truly be, even when given to the incredibly automatic skill of an advanced supercomputer. During the tour, Alan Grant and Gennaro are presently discussing a small discovery the Doctor had found in the wild. Grant describes the tiny white fragment as having a pattern on the interior curve, and once you turn it over, you'll also see the faint pattern of raised lines making roughly triangular shapes. Grant says he's dug them up before at one of his dig sites. Dr. Harding just shakes his head, insisting that the animals can't breed. But Alan isn't having it. Look at the curvature, the thickness of the shell. Unless they've got ostriches in Jurassic Park, this is a dinosaur egg. Harding again doesn't believe Grant, telling him that the dinosaurs simply cannot breed. All I know, Grant said, is that this is a dinosaur egg. Once the mathematician heard this, he asked the doctor if he had any idea on what species it might be. To which Grant replied, yes, it's a velociraptor egg. Back at control, Hammond can't believe what he's hearing over the radio. He finds it absolutely absurd. That little fragment had to have come from a bird. Let's do a little test then, shall we, said Malcolm over the radio. He asked Mr. Arnold to run a tally of all of the animals in the park. No problem, the man said, just before the total number of animals printed out for everyone to see. Out of all of the expected 238 animals, each and every one came up as accounted for. Well, I hope you're satisfied, said Hammond, before asking the chaotician if he could see it down there. Malcolm said that they could see it just fine. Now, he said, can you have the computer search for a different number of animals? Arnold asked what exact number he'd like to try, and Malcolm simply said, how about 239? Arnold told him it would be just a minute before the computer started printing out the results. It would appear as if all of the dinosaurs were still accounted for, until the computer picked up the results of 50 copies being present in the park, out of an expected 49. Hammond sat forward. What the hell is that, he said. We picked up another copy, Ray responded. From where, the billionaire asked, to which everyone in the room couldn't seem to answer. The radio crackled, and Ian asked for another tally. Now then, let's search for, say, 300 animals? That'll take a few minutes, but I can do it, Arnold replied. Hammond was beside himself, confused and worried. What the hell was he talking about, 300 animals? They'd specifically bred and kept record of 238 animals in the park. Where did this copy come from? What the hell was going on? Pretty soon, the total number of animals went up to 244. What does that mean, asked Hammond. The computer is counting the animals in the park, Wu said. All of the animals. Hammond began to show concern. I thought it always did that. Nedry, did you screw up again? Nedry immediately said no, before explaining that the computer simply allows an expected number of animals to be searched before giving its result. It's a convenience, not a flaw. Unfortunately, both Wu and Arnold began to realize the severity of what this could entail. The number climbed again, this time reaching 262. Wait a minute, John said. My animals can't breed. The sensors must be picking up field mice or something. He then turned to Wu. They can't breed, can they? Wu simply assured him that no, they cannot. The total rose to 270. Where are they coming from, Arnold said in disbelief. Wu just responded that damned if he knew. Now the number was at 283. Holy shit, said Gennaro. How much more? And then suddenly, the screen read error. 300 animals not found. Hammond smiled. An error, he said nodding. I thought so but then the screen printed. The total had climbed all the way up to 292. Most of the dinosaurs' population stayed relatively the same. The computer found the two rexes, all eight trikes, and all seven dilophosaurs, but other animals appeared more numerous. Out of an expected 49 copies in the park, the system found 65. Where there should only be 16 Othnelia, there are now 23. One more Myosaur and one more Hypsilophodontid were found in the park than there should be. And instead of the eight velociraptors that were expected to be found, the computer tallied a new total of 37. Now you see the flaw in your procedures, said Malcolm over the radio. You only tracked the expected number of dinosaurs. In your worry of losing any of the animals, you encountered a different problem. You had more than the expected number. 
Wu and Arnold couldn't believe it, but Malcolm reassured him that this means that they are indeed breeding. At this moment, Muldoon expressed his concern. This means that there were raptors loose in the park. Hammond tried to get everyone to relax, saying that there was only a small increase in a few populations, and that there wasn't anything to worry about. But Wu couldn't believe this train of thought. Do you know what this means, he said to Hammond? Of course I do, the billionaire responded. It means you screwed up. The radio clicked once more, this time with Grant's voice coming through to control. I think this proves that you have breeding taking place on seven different spots on the island. While never seen explicitly in any of the Jurassic Park films, I've always found Malcolm's sobering computer revelation to be an incredibly well-written and very entertaining event. The data that the Jurassic Park technicians had put so much faith and trust in was now starting to turn on them, and there were clearly flaws in the system. Despite this, most of the park's employees would continue to believe that they had most of everything under complete control. They designed the island to run efficiently and almost wholly on computer automation. This unfortunately led to several errors in the system. One might correctly assume them to be quite chaotic. If you have yet to read Jurassic Park or if you've read it before in the past, I'd love to know your opinions on this scene in the comments down below. And on a side note, what portion of the original books would you like to see in the future on this channel? There are literally tons to choose from. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives, like Robert Messing. I'd also like to thank my park workers and engine hunters as well, like Zachary. It's really awesome that you've helped me build this thing up, man, and I seriously am eternally grateful for every ounce of support that you continue to show me. It honestly does mean the world. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.